Hi friends, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about log4j. Okay, why this log4j came into picture in IT industry? I mean, it's in software industry. Uh, this log4j not only for Java technology, it will be used used in .NET, Python, Ruby on Rails, every technology, everywhere. This log4j is the mandatory. Might be name will be the difference, but the procedure and way of functionality way of working is the same means log4j is is kind of whenever some operations or some transaction is happened if anything is crashed or if anything is went wrong so if we want to trace that issue from the application side we'll use this log4j framework so you can say in java we are using uh, system.out.println so it is printing the uh, information in console so right so this is the wrong this uh, system.out.println will remove whenever server is restarted or uh, your application is shut down so whatever generated the logs it will remove completely from the system so in uh, suppose if a transaction has happened today but the issue is found and after two or three days so if anyone raised a concern i want those transaction or i want to see what happened on that day so you don't have information anything so in that case if you use log4j this will capture all the details i mean if it is a error or information if you want to store anything not for sensitive information i am clearly telling it's for identification purpose only what is happened that's it so we can take the time stamp and we can search what happened what is the error and who made that error so those information we can capture from logs so these logs will be stored in different different places some of the application they will store logs in server itself some of the application they will store in database side so either it may be based on their requirement okay we'll go one by one how log4j came into industry okay friends as i told earlier right so most of the java applications while beginner time will use sysouts i mean system.out.println for printing our output into console okay this one whenever you are closing the your browse i mean your eclipse or your applications this is out statements will erase automatically so in that case for this reason only apache introduced log4j so what it will uh, use is it will generate the logs and it will store in some specific place whenever you want you required you can go and search based on timestamp you will get the complete information of that particular issue okay this is this will be this is the open source uh, framework this is a completely open source it's a under apache software license okay this is present in org.apache.log4j package it is a common tool it's for small application to large erp applications you can use okay in this log4j it has a majorly three components present one is the logger second one is the appender and third one is the layout okay these three is the main important things in the log4j if you want to implement a log in your application or in your system you need to follow these three components okay let's discuss one by one first we'll go logger this log this is the this logger is a class it is present in org.apache.log4j package so whenever if you want to create any logs in your applications first you need to create this logger object means this logger is a class you need to create instance for this logger class then you can use logger methods predefined method which was implemented by apache so use that methods for printing or storing your logs okay you, you, here i will show how to create logger object here this is a static logger log logger dot get logger so here you can give the your class name whatever class you are going to create logger so you need to use that class name or else you can give the straight forward string also it will accept okay logger object methods these are the debug debug 
info warn error fatal these are the methods is present inside the logger object so don't think about this method where when we need to use all methods functionality is the same it's need to store the logs and it's need to capture okay but the thing is based on your requirement your condition you can use any one of the method so here fatal is the highest one if you see here this is the order for logger methods debug info warn error fatal. suppose in your case if you are if our, your application is interacting with any database so if you may aware this place might be you will get error so in that case you can go for error in some case if you want to capture the any warnings is coming uh, in your operation just you can go for warn if you want to print only information what is happened in application when user is using you can use info debug same like that so second one is you created the object you have written everything but you need to know where how you need to append your data into file database or somewhere so for that you need to use appender you know how appender will work so once you created the logger object um, you have written some data or you are capturing the error or info so that you want to store into one file or say you console also you can uh, uh, display or if you want to store into database those you can use so for that appender has given different different type of appenders here console appender jdbc appender file appender smtp appender socket appender etc so some of the appenders here so here console appender is like a sysout so once the application is closed this console logs will be erased jdbc appender if you want to store your data into the database, I mean your log data into database, you can use JDBC appender, file appender. This is the most commonly using file appender. It's like if you want to store your logs information into text file or out file or error file or log file, we'll use file appender. Okay. Uh, next one is a SMTP appender. This is if you want to send your log information to the through via email. So then that time uh, we'll use SMTP appender socket appender if you want use your logs into store into somewhere remotely not in your system current system you are trying to store in another external system then that time you will use socket appender okay and one more thing you might get some doubts if suppose if data is increasing uh, um, mb and it will reach to gb so what happen if you are going to open that file so it won't open you cannot able to open because it will take long time to open so in that case again appender has given two more appenders sub appenders it's like a rolling appender and a daily rolling file appender what these two appenders will do rolling appender means you can give the specific amount of i mean space once your log is reached to that space it will automatically create the new log and it will keep back up for the your old log that also you can keep the how many logs you need to keep as a backup that also you can use so that will discuss in my program next level this next one is a daily rolling file appender you are aware daily this much data only it will be the uh, uh, store in log so that if you know exact thing na, so you can give the some specific time and that time it will roll your log and it will, it will create the new logs and it will same it will uh, create backup for your previous day log okay and next one uh, next one and final one is a layout So this layout is in, so what are the format you want to store your logs into the database or files, a text file or out file, CR file, log file. Those will be taken in by the this layout. So, okay friends, these are the brief information about log4j. So while listening this one you will get to know okay we got some information but you don't know how to implement this log4j into your application. 
okay this will uh, see in my next program i mean in my next video i will explain log4j in detail console appender by using console appender by using file appender how we can create the logs in files those we will discuss okay thanks friends thanks for watching my video if you like my video please like and do subscribe to my channel share my videos thank you very much